Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. <coughs> This is Dr. Rosmani Tasmin again. I'm uh, now lecturing on chapter 5 titling Concept Generation for New Product Development. In this week, uh, in this recent weeks, uh, we have to deliver the lecture through FOC mode which is full online class uh, because of the prohibition to handle Uh, lecture in the uh, big gatherings. So I have uploaded the material on the Enmuro platform for you to retrieve the PowerPoint material and uh, after having a look, perhaps you could follow my lecture with this uh, video clip through YouTube channel. Okay, so if We look on a new product development concept, for example, iPhone. Okay, perhaps 10 or 15 years ago when iPhone introduced uh, the smartphone, uh, they introduced uh, this kind of 5 uh, or 6 inch diagonal size. So what is their main concept for their first uh, introduction? The, their main concept uh, is that for the phone uh, to be Uh, in the pocket size, which is pocketable size. So that's why uh, this iPhone is designed in such way of this uh, kind of size. However, after about 12 or 15 years later, suddenly users think that this kind of size is uh, rather small. So they need a bigger size, or about the double the size of this 5-inch uh, diagonal. So in recent years, The new concept of smartphone uh, called foldable uh, smartphone is being introduced. So, since user expectation uh, for the smartphone usage uh, has been significantly increasing due to the application uh, become more uh, complicated and perhaps user need to uh, reply email within the same device or user need to edit some kind of graphic in order to be sent to their friends, so they need a bigger size screen. However, they still need to maintain the uh, small pocketable size. So as such, even this uh, is a bigger screen after it is being folded down, again, it still can be kept inside your pocket of your sh shirts or, or your trousers. So again, this is what is all about uh, concept generation in which The product must be used to be best suited with the expectation of customer. So, in recent years in the Malaysian market, if we take a look on the new product development in the form in the segment of food, for example, this uh, crackers uh, product segment by Munchies, you can see a new product concept which is uh, which is a more uh, longer and a slimmer size a kind of a product size for crackers. In this new concept, basically the uh, slimmer and longer uh, cracker size can be broken uh, into two in the center. There is a partition breaking lines here in which customer can break the crackers after the dipping. How this concept is being developed is perhaps partly due to the previous experience users enjoying the crackers by having this rectang a bigger rectangular size. If you take a look on this size, actually this size of crackers cannot fit uh, directly towards the mouth or the mark of the tetari. So that's why the product concept is being introduced uh, towards a slimmer and longer size. So concept generation is all about design, the perspective, the thinking of the product to best suit the customer usage and its application. That's all product concept generation. In the next chapter uh, of the textbook, you are being presented on the uh, nailing uh, roof machine, or I would call it a nailing machine. Well, what is their main task? The main task of hammer and nail is basically to have your manual power or your hand to hammer down the hammer towards the nail so that the nail can be pounded through the wooden material. So that is the basic 
a job for hammer and nails. However, if you want to make it a more automated uh, device, so uh, we have this kind of uh, cordless roofing nail by the brand name of a Boss Stitch, which uses the multi-blow technology and the concept is using uh, DC mo uh, motor power, direct current and it can drive the nails from one inch to one and a half uh, nails length and it is powered by nickel cadmium batteries which require about one hour of charging and it uh, is weighing around eight pounds so this is uh, another new product concept uh, which is introduced by Boss Stitch. I also have uploaded the video clip by uh, the brand uh, name of DeWalt for cordless roofing uh, nailer uh, in which you can have a look so that you can have the uh, feel how the cordless roofing nail work. Another uh, product concept which is executing the same job which is to nail down the nail uh, towards the medium uh, is called Makita cordless nail. However, Makita uh, cordless nail, this as uh, shown in this picture, is actually uh, not using uh, electric to power up the system. Rather, it uses the uh, compressed air canister in order to deliver the punch to the nail and towards the wood. So this is another concept uh, in which uh, the same job can be done but using different power technology or using different concept uh, of delivering the job uh, to get done. So this is another uh, second concept for the same uh, nailing job. So, in the concept uh, development phase, we are here actually generating, generating the best concept to be introduced for the development of our new product. So, we have set uh, a target specification for the product in the previous uh, chapter. And uh, now we are discussing about how is the best concept uh, to develop for a new product. So product concept is basically the uh, it's about the technology to be used uh, to be embedded into the new product. It's an approximation of technology uh, that is working uh, for the uh, that is working principle uh, that basically drive the product. So normally uh, there is a concept conceptual sketch uh, for this model in the form of three dimensional fo uh, format. Uh, with a kind of a brief description of how the product actually works. And this product uh, concept is basically uh, very important in, in order to ensure the success uh, of the product to be introduced to the market, uh, which is highly depending on uh, customer usage, its quality and also uh, the product performance. If we take a look uh, in the uh, market, uh, currently there are many uh, successful product concepts. Uh, and those successful product concepts, basically, uh, it must meet the customer needs, right? For example, user-friendly, easy uh, to be kept at a pocketable size, and it must solve customer problem, right? And it must be sold at the correct price, which is... I would say affordable to be bestseller and it must be user friendly for example like a Sony Walkman right it is being sold at a, a affordable price and during those days in 1970s people would like to listen to music right so instead of having uh, the big uh, bulky stereo uh, radio uh, they bring around so they just uh, put the headphones uh, to their heads and they can listen uh, or enjoy their music and another product concept which is successful uh, in the past few decades is apple macintosh in which uh, the biggest uh, concept that making it successful it is based on its graphical user interface you uh, gui 
and it is driven by mouse which is point and click right and another concept which is successful by apple computers is uh, apple computer uh, a thin uh, thin design which is shown like this so it is light easy to be uh, brought around easy to be uh, uh, it is portable so that's why this kind of concept is actually important to ensure product design and product uh, to be success in the market not all product concepts successful there are also a few uh, example of uh, failure in the new product concept okay so one example is a uh, new diet coke right so new diet coke uh, when it is being introduced is considered a failure because it is related to customer taste and it is very hard for customer to change their taste and when they introduce the new coke customer resists uh, for this kind of new taste and as such they need to recall the product so this is another example of a failing concept which is not meeting the customer expectation Another failure product concept is what they call as Ford Pinto. During 1960s and 70s, uh, the concept which is being emphasized is basically a uh, car which is uh, using uh, less fuel or fuel saving car. As such, Ford which is uh, already highly known to uh, develop a big size car and suddenly they try to design Ford Pinto uh, in the form of smaller size car. However, this car, even though it is small, but it doesn't meet the safety requirement in which uh, it is prone to catch fire when it involves in the accident, especially if it is uh, uh, involved accident hitting from the back. So the car easily caught fire and got burned. So this is another failing, uh, failing concept of a new Ford Pinto. So there are other concepts in which uh, I need not to explain everything. So you could uh, explore in the form of uh, Harley Davidson perfume. So it is also another failure of a new product concept. So why it fails, we must study so that we can design a new product which is successful in the market. So there are five steps, uh, basically, how to execute or produce new product concept for our new product development. First, we have to understand the problem, clarify the problem uh, related to the new product that you want to develop. So in order to uh, <coughs> clarify the pro uh, problems, you have, to, uh, you have two ways uh, to solve your problem. Okay, first... You could uh, resolve the problem by searching ideas or ways and method uh, externally. For example, you could uh, <clears throat> interview lead user or major users uh, which are using the product, or you could uh, approach expert in order to give expert advice, or you could search pattern in the pattern office uh, in order to find that uh, relevant pattern is available for you to develop the new product and it is not necessarily you you start from scratch and you could study also literature out there pertaining to the new product you want to develop and you could also compare your newly developed product with the existing uh, best uh, product in the market which is benchmarking or you could uh, search idea to solve the problem internally in the form of uh, having internal discussion, brainstorming with your engineer or other uh, design people uh, in uh, in your company, you have you could have an uh, in individual discussion, or you could have a group discussion uh, within the uh, internal company. And when when you have found a new concept or an existing concept, then you explore systematically in the form of a classification tree or combination table which concept is mostly suitable to develop in terms of cost, feasibility and uh, product success 
and then you come up with the integ integrated solution uh, in order to solve the problem and producing the new newly designed product. So these are the five step concept generation method in order to develop a new uh, product uh, related to uh, this course. So I stop here to end uh, this uh, chapter 5 for part 1. We take a short break and later we continue for the second part. As I stated earlier, uh, first we have to clarify the problem or the problem of uh, how to develop the new product. So what kind of product you want to develop to solve the problem. Right? In this case, instead of nailing uh, down the nail by using your hand manually, so we need to uh, design or to produce a machine which can automate the nailing, uh, the nailing job. So first, we have to clarify the problem, uh, which is consisting of developing a general understanding and break down the problem into sub-problems. For example, a nailer. So what kind of the sub-construct uh, that you need to have in order to perform a nailing job? So as such, you could have uh, designed a better uh, roofing uh, nailer or better nailing machine, for example. So then we have to decompose the complex problems of uh, producing roofing nailer uh, by looking into the components of each of the complex uh, problem. For example, in the uh, course of solving the problem in designing a new uh, nailing machine, we have to treat the machine or the product in the form of a black box. For example, these are the black box that you want to solve the problem. This uh, black box is actually to design or develop a new handheld nailer or nailing machine. And each device or product normally it has input and it also has output. Right? So for the device to work, you need to have energy. What uh, energy that drive the uh, nailing machine or the roof nailer so is it by electric or is it by like uh, that Makita uh, compressed air canister what material or raw material it used to uh, serve as input for example the nail itself and what sort of uh, processing signal it will give the user to let known that the uh, machine is working properly or the machine requires some servicing or machine requires some kind of repair. So here are all the black box. All this energy, material and signal is expected uh, to serve as input towards the black box. And this black box will be the new uh, roofing uh, nailer that you want to produce. And the output is in the form of how do they punch the nail towards the medium and how the material or the nail uh, will be driven in and what, what, sena, what sort of uh, signal control that the device must have in order to tell customer its status. Now, we take a look on the sub-component of this uh, black box in the form of uh, sub-functions. For example, for the energy uh, to push the nail down, so you need to have a form of uh, energy that could store or accept the uh, external force. For example, in the form of like spring or any form of energy storage, right? And then you need to have, uh, you need to convert the energy from, for example, the electric energy towards the motion energy. Right. For example, convert energy to translational energy. All right. For example, electric towards uh, kinetic energy. And apply this translational energy towards the nail. And the nail make a move. And it will drive the nail down towards the wooden media. These are the flow for energy supply input. And then it is being processed here. And it is driven... Uh, it is driving nail down towards the wood and it serves as a 
artwork. So here, what are the materials needed in order to nail down uh, the nail towards the wood? First, well, of course, you have to keep the nail at certain kind of arrangement. They call it nail storage, uh, be it inside the bracket or be it inside kind of uh, uh, vertical arrangement. So after you store the nail here, so you need to isolate, isolate the nail piece by piece. Of course, you don't want to punch two nails at one shot. So the nail must be delivered serially one by one. And the nails will come into contact toward the kinetic energy and giving result that the nail being driven in. And you need have uh, you need to have some sense of control on your device. This is what they call a trip of tool. Be it it is uh, green, which is ready to use. Uh, be it yellow, perhaps it needs some servicing. Uh, be it red, uh, it means that the machine is uh, broken or not functioning. So this sense strip will send the trigger tool in order to ensure that the machine can work properly and the uh, kinetic energy can help uh, to drive the nail towards the wood. That is the first part, which is uh, clarify the problem, how you want to take a look on the bigger problem with its smaller subcomponent. Step two is actually how do you want to solve the problem? There are many sources of ways and methods to solve the problem. Example, this problem perhaps has been solved earlier by uh, other manufacturer or by other engineer or by other inventor. As such, you could, you could search externally, particularly at the uh, patent office uh, to find the process or to find a similar product to deliver the same job. Or you could use interview uh, the lead user, for example, the building contractor or the house builder who build house that frequently using uh, <coughs> roofing nailer. Or you could also consult some expert uh, related to a roofing nailer. For example, a product engineer who has developed a roofing nailer earlier. Or you could search uh, to solve your problem through uh, searching for patents at patent office. Uh, either it is at my uh, IPO office, Malaysian patent office or US patent office. Perhaps there are ways and methods that inventor have developed earlier so that you can partially use the solution to solve your problem. Or you could read some reports, a white paper pertaining uh, to methods of solving your problem. Or you could compare the ways and means how to develop your product by looking at the existing product which is available at the market. So we call this, of course, benchmark benchmarking. So just now I highlight on pattern. So what is pattern? Uh, pattern uh, normally is a kind of rights or it is kind of uh, property by inventor who has invented certain process or certain product uh, that is quite similar for the product that you want to develop. So you could refer uh, as pattern. This pattern is a normally owned by the inventor and it is patented at a patent or trademark office in any particular country so that within the same process or the same product actually others cannot imitate so this is uh, one way to protect the first inventor from uh, unnecessarily later uh, copier so what is patent uh, once you file your product pattern, normally you are uh, having privilege for about 20 years to have the right on your patent. So within that 20 years, if other inventor want to develop the same product, actually uh, they can uh, apply for permission to use your pattern by paying some royalty. So these are the advantage of pattern. Uh, it means that who invented and filed it first, they have the right uh, to develop that product in that kind of way, in that kind of process for about 20 years. 
If you don't want to search for patterns, then you could clarify your problem to develop the new product by uh, searching internally or uh, within your own organization or within your own uh, staff, within your own employees. So in this way, normally to solve the problem, you call a session of meeting and we call it storming. Uh, we call it brainstorming. And this type of search is considered internal in which you are dealing with the internal designer, internal electrical uh, engineer or electrical product designer in order to uh, come up with method and technique to solve the problem in order to produce a new product. So this is uh, another way of solving your pro problem to clarify the problem in order to uh, generate a lot of ideas from your own colleagues. And some ideas might be relevant, some ideas might be sound crazy, but at least that is one way of to solve the problem internally. Tips to generate solution from the concept. <clears throat> here, here are some method how you could generate ideas in order to produce your new product. So one way you could make some analogy, which is you compare your intended newly developed product with the same device uh, to deliver the same job. Or you could come up uh, with like a wonder list, what you wish the product could deliver the job for. Or you could uh, set certain quantitative goal, or you could uh, use stimuli in order to generate new ideas uh, during your kind of brainstorming. Now, after uh, searching externally and internally, you by that time have some sort of ideas how to approach to produce your newly suggested product. For example, for this uh, nailer uh, roofing machine, uh, there are few suggested uh, solutions in order to deliver the punch or uh, the, uh, what sort of technology to use. For example, you uh, may use, for example, uh, fuel air combustion or you may use uh, uh, gunpowder. These are some of the crazy ideas uh, given by your members during the brainstorming or during your search. Or you could use, for example, solar electric cell. So these are a few options that you could consider. However, you have to decide what is the best mechanism to design and produce your uh, roofing nailer. Whether it is a single impact, for example, single punch for the nail, or you want to deliver multiple punch like uh, pump, 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 right? So like this, triple punch, one punch, second punch, third punch, or is it a single punch to drive the nail in? Or you could have like a multiple impact uh, like this, a uh, few punch until the nail gang in, or merely you could like a, just a single push, uh, like a hydraulic system in which it pushes until the nail uh, fully inserted, or you could have some sort of like a twist push, right? So these are part of the applying the uh, kinetic energy so that the nailer could punch the nail towards the wood. Uh, in what way you could store the energy that you accept uh, from the source? For example, is it by chemical or is it by, for example, pneumatic, right? Or compressed air, which is called pneumatics. Or is it by hydraulic, you know, by a compressed oil? Or is it by electrical, AC or DC or even fuel cell? So these are uh, ways and methods to explore systematically on what sort of uh, technology power you need to drive your newly developed nailing machine. Here are a few options or choices you could choose uh, to punch, uh, deliver the technology to punch the nail. For example, you may use a linear motor, right? So AC motor, or you may use solenoid uh, in order to be uh, to release uh, the motion to the spring. 
and the spring release its energy and uh, deliver multiple impacts towards the nail in order to punch uh, towards the wood. So these are main, uh, several options they could use. Either you use moving mass, uh, like a moving weight or spring to push the nail single impact or multiple impact or to slowly push the nail inward towards the wood. So here are a few options. So say we take a look on the single uh, blow solution for the nailer, right? So you may be able to use rotary motor with transmission and then pass it to the spring and the spring release its uh, cap internal power towards the single impact, for example, like this. The motor is unwinding the spring uh, upward and later the spring is being uh, kept uh, the power internally and uh, with a release of a latch the spring is unsprung and it uh, will deliver the punch uh, toward the cam and the cam will deliver the punch towards the nail and the nail goes uh, inward towards the wood or you could Consider for multiple impact nailer in which few punch uh, to the nail so that the nail, nail will go into the wood. For example, use uh, rotary motor transmission like this. Uh, the motor will rotate and the spring will be uh, kept uh, uns, uh, inward towards this to keep the energy. And later the spring release its energy with this latch and multiple impact is delivered to the nail with uh, first punch, second punch and third punch. So there is another concept how to deliver the uh, roofing nailer uh, machine. Or you could you uh, consider using a single impact with linear motor. For example, you use a linear motor like this. This is a linear motor and there is a moving mass, right? Moving mass which is a moving weight and that weight is being moved to deliver single impact towards the nail and the nail being uh, deliver a punch uh, towards the wood. So this is also another concept to uh, deliver the same job to punch the nail towards the wood with single impact by using linear motor. So after you have uh, consolidated your concept, then you design the outlook of the product in the form of we have AutoCAD design and here is the side view of the roofing nailer, the top view and the front view. And this is also another view of a product like a chair uh, with a bench uh, with its front. This is how you look from the front, this from the side and this from the top. And this is if you take a look from the cross section. Okay class, I think I have uh, highlighted to you what it takes to develop a, a concept for your new product development. So thank you for your attention and uh, thank you for seeing my video in the uh, YouTube platform. By that, that's all for chapter 5. Thank you again.